Hey there, fellow time travelers of television. Do you remember the days when you used to gather around the tube, waiting in anticipation for the next episode of Star Trek, the next generation to transport you to the far reaches of the cosmos? Ah, those were the days, weren't they? Whether you were a die-hard Trekkie or just someone who enjoyed the occasional voyage with Captain John Luke Picard and his crew, there's something undeniably magical about reminiscing on those 1987 adventures in space. So, do you recall the thrill of the unknown, the camaraderie of the Enterprise's diverse crew, and the moral quandaries that made you ponder the very essence of humanity? Perhaps you had a favorite character, someone whose wisdom or quirks left an indelible mark on your memory. Was it Picard's unwavering leadership, Data's quest to understand humanity, or maybe even Q.S. mischievous antics? Or perhaps it was the ever-charming Geordi LaForge in his visor that allowed him to see a world beyond what we can imagine. And who could forget those thrilling encounters with the Borg, the Klingons, or the enigmatic Q? Those were moments that had us gripping the edge of our seats, wondering how our intrepid crew would overcome such incredible challenges. As we journey through the stars of nostalgia, I invite you to share your treasured memories of Star Trek, the next generation. What were your favorite episodes? Did you ever dress up as a Starfleet officer for Halloween or engage in lively debates about the Prime Directive? Let's revel in the nostalgia and celebrate the enduring legacy of this iconic series. Now, as we set our course for the cosmos of random facts about the show, prepare to be amazed by the fascinating tidbits that make Star Trek, the next generation, a timeless classic. Stay tuned for some intriguing insights. The evolution of Counselor Troy in Star Trek, the next generation in the early stages of Star Trek, the next generation, the character of Counselor Deanna Troy had a drastically different concept. Originally, she was envisioned as a sexually voracious, four-breasted alien. This unconventional idea raised eyebrows and concerns within the production team. Dorothy D.C. Fontana, a respected writer and producer on the show, took a stand against this concept. She personally lobbied Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, arguing that it was not only ridiculous, but also impractical. Creating such a character would have required complex and unfeasible makeup which could have been both costly and time-consuming. Moreover, Fontana believed that the concept was offensive and detracted from the show's serious and thoughtful tone. Ultimately, thanks to Fontana's persuasive efforts, the idea of Counselor Troy as a four-breasted alien was dropped. Instead, the character was reimagined as a more relatable and humanoid betazoid with empathic abilities that contributed significantly to the series. This decision proved crucial in shaping the character and the overall success of Star Trek, the next generation. It demonstrates the importance of practicality and sensitivity in the creation of iconic characters, reminding us that sometimes, even in the realm of science fiction, simplicity can be key. In the 1987 TV series Star Trek, The Next Generation, an interesting fact stands out. Initially, the creators used a unique method to create the iconic transporter effect. They achieved this by filming stirred glitter in water. This simple yet innovative approach gave birth to one of the most iconic visual effects in the series. While the series is known for its advanced technology and futuristic settings, it's intriguing to learn that something as visually striking as the transporter effect had humble beginnings in a practical and hands-on manner. This method of using glitter and water not only captured the imagination of viewers, but also became a hallmark of the Star Trek franchise, emphasizing the show's ability to blend science fiction with creative ingenuity. So, the next time you watch Star Trek, the next generation and witness the shimmering transporter effect, remember that it was born from a simple yet effective filming technique involving glitter and water. Gene Roddenberry's unfulfilled vision for LGBT characters in Star Trek the next generation Gene Roddenberry, the visionary creator of Star Trek, had grand plans to introduce LGBT characters to the iconic series during its 1987 revival, Star Trek, The Next Generation. However, these plans never materialized, 
and the reasons behind their abandonment have raised questions. During the early stages of the show's production, Roddenberry had commissioned scripts to introduce gay characters into the Star Trek universe. This move was seen as a groundbreaking step, aligning with Star Trek's reputation for addressing social issues through science fiction. Yet, as the show progressed, these plans faded into obscurity. Roddenberry's declining health and eventual passing left executive producer Rick Berman in charge. Under his leadership, the idea of introducing overtly gay characters was discarded. This decision sparked criticism from some quarters, given Star Trek's historical role in pushing the boundaries of societal norms. Though no public reason was cited for the omission, various figures associated with the franchise, including writers David Gerald and Ronald Demore, as well as actors Leonard Nimoy, Kate Mulgrew, and Scott Bakula, have indirectly suggested that Berman personally vetoed attempts to include LGBT characters. It wasn't until 2016, with the release of Star Trek Beyond, that an openly LGBT character, Hikaru Sulu, was introduced. This decision was partly a tribute to George Takei, the original actor who portrayed Sulu and an LGBT activist in real life. Ironically, Takei expressed disappointment with the decision, believing it did not align with Roddenberry's original vision for the character. The omission of LGBT characters in Star Trek, the next generation stands as a missed opportunity to further the show's legacy as a pioneer in addressing social issues through science fiction. While the reasons behind this decision remain somewhat murky, it remains a notable aspect of the series' history. This article explores Gene Roddenberry's initial plans to introduce LGBT characters in Star Trek, The Next Generation, and the subsequent decision to abandon those plans, shedding light on a unique chapter in the franchise's history. In the 1987 TV series Star Trek, The Next Generation, several sets used for the corridor, engineering, transporter room, and Battle Bridge were originally built for the first four Star Trek movies. These sets also served as different locations on the Enterprise and Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, and Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. This allowed for a seamless transition between the original movie series and the new TV series, creating a sense of continuity in the Star Trek universe. Additionally, the number 47 had a peculiar presence throughout the show. This tradition was started by writer and co-producer Joe Minoski, who chose this particular number because of a humorous mathematical claim. As a graduate student at Pomona College, professor of mathematics Donald Bentley jokingly proved that all numbers are equal to 47. This quirky choice became a running theme in the show, appearing on computer screens, serial numbers, dates, and more. Notably, 47 also coincided with Sir Patrick Stewart's age when the series made its debut. Interestingly, Patrick Stewart, who portrayed Captain John Luke Picard, initially had doubts about the show's success. For the first six weeks of shooting, he refused to unpack any of his suitcases. Despite his reservations, Star Trek, the next generation went on to become a beloved and iconic part of the Star Trek franchise. These tidbits of behind-the-scenes information add an extra layer of intrigue to the enduring legacy of Star Trek, the next generation, a series that continues to captivate fans to this day. To this, to this day. In 1987, Star Trek, the next generation embarked on its journey, but what many might not know is how it all began. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, initially had no plans to be involved in this new series. However, when he heard the original ideas and concepts, he changed his mind and became the executive producer. One notable moment in the series was in its premiere episode, Encounter at Farpoint. This tradition from the original Star Trek series continued as Admiral Leonard H. McCoy, MD, made a cameo appearance as an honored guest, escorted by the Enterprise D. It was a nod to the past while ushering in a new era. Another interesting aspect was the character of Worf's son, Alexander. Initially played by John Paul Stewart, producers later decided to make him a recurring character. Brian Bonsall took over the role due to his experience on Family Ties. Star Trek The Next Generation left a lasting legacy, and these behind-the-scenes insights shed light on its beginnings and connections to the original series. It's a reminder that even in the vastness of space, the ties between the past and the future can be strong. 
is strong. In 1987, the TV series Star Trek, The Next Generation took viewers to a new era in the Star Trek universe. While the show introduced us to iconic characters like Captain John Luke Picard and Commander William Riker, it also had some interesting origins and early changes. One notable character, Data, the android who longed to understand humanity, had its genesis in the mind of Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek. Back in 1974, Roddenberry worked on an unsold pilot for a proposed series called The Quester Tapes. This pilot featured an android on a quest to find its creator while studying humanity. This concept later fused with the idea of Zahn, an emotion-curious Vulcan from the 1970s Star Trek Phase Two proposal. Together, they evolved into the character we know as Dana. Before the show's debut, some characters also underwent minor changes. Captain Picard's first name was originally Julian, and Commander Riker's name was spelled Riker. Data's name was pronounced Dado instead of Data. Even Wesley Crusher, Dr. Crusher's son, was initially Leslie Crusher. Interestingly, Whoopi Goldberg, a well-known actress, joined the cast as Ginnon, the enigmatic bartender. She became a part of the show because she was a fan of Star Trek and expressed her interest in having a recurring role. Her presence added depth to the series, and her character became a fan favorite. In summary, Star Trek The Next Generation had its beginnings in Gene Roddenberry's earlier projects, went through some character name changes, and welcomed Whoopi Goldberg as a fan-turned-cast member. These tidbits of behind-the-scenes information offer a glimpse into the show's evolution and the dedicated people who brought it to life. Brought it to life. Brought it to life. As we bring this voyage through the cosmos to a close, I invite you to journey inward, beyond the stars and galaxies, into the realms of your own memories and reflections. Star Trek, The Next Generation, the iconic television series that first graced our screens in 1987, was more than just a show. It was a portal to boundless exploration, both of the universe and the human spirit. Perhaps you recall the inspiring wisdom of Captain John Luke Picard, who guided the US Enterprise with a sense of unwavering principle. Or maybe it's the camaraderie among the diverse crew members, exemplifying the strength of unity and diversity that resonates with you. The intriguing encounters with alien civilizations, the ethical dilemmas that challenged our understanding of morality, and the enduring optimism for a better future. These are the threads that wove the tapestry of the next generation. Now, it's your turn to engage. Share your cherished memories, your favorite episodes, or the characters who left an indelible mark on your heart. How has Star Trek, the next generation, influenced your life? Have you boldly ventured into philosophical contemplations inspired by the show's themes? As you reflect on the profound impact this series has had on you, remember that you are not alone in your admiration for this timeless gem. The Star Trek community spans the globe, and your unique perspective is a star in its own right. Thank you for taking this moment to reflect and share your thoughts. Your presence in this journey through the cosmos of memory is appreciated. Keep the spirit of exploration alive, and may your trek through life be as bold and exciting as those of the US Enterprise. Live long and prosper, and keep the legacy of Star Trek, the next generation alive. Generation alive.